guys. I've been really busy this week because our editor from Wargame Soldiers and Strategy Magazine has been visiting us here for the last couple days, and so we've been spending a lot of time kind of hashing out upcoming themes and articles and stuff like that. So, basically, I haven't had a lot of time to figure out what I'll be painting or spend much time on prep work. So, I guess I sort of ended up grabbing what I already had out. Um, I'd actually, a couple weeks ago, I did a light infantry officer, a French Napoleonic light infantry officer. And at that time, I was considering some other Napoleonic figures, so I had one laying out my work desk, so that's what I got this week. So yeah, we're back to Napoleonics again already. I know it wasn't a big break, but I think people really like them, so hopefully that won't be a problem. Uh, so the other figure that I had been considering was this guy. He is an officer of the Imperial Guard Dragoons, so a really impressive figure. Um, you know, green uniform, some buff, gold helmet, some neat leopard skin accents, which I've always wanted to paint. So I'm actually really looking forward to this guy, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, I love doing these kind of really showy uniforms. Uh, this particular unit, I'm not sure. I believe it's from the, the Perry's, from the Perry's own range, or it could be from Foundry, but then of course it probably was sculpted by the Perry's, even if it was from Foundry. I'm not quite sure. I will check. It'll be in the description box exactly where to get it. Uh, as soon as I figure that this out. And I know this guy is French again, and I've been doing a lot of French Napoleonics and not really been focusing on any of the other sort of armies that were involved in that, and I'm sorry about that. I will be trying to work on that in upcoming videos. I actually just don't have, for example, I'd like to do some Brits, but I actually just don't have any British figures right now. For some reason, we've got a lot of French guys laying around. As a matter of fact, we are next week uh, we're getting ready for sort of a, an event with a great big Napoleonic game that's going to be played with a whole bunch of people. And so, anyway, but it's kind of like a lot of French, where at least my boyfriend, who's kind of the one who's into this, he, he has a lot of French cavalry he has to paint, so, you know, and that's like his part of the project. Anyway, but yeah, we've, there's always been more interest in the French here, probably because of the fancy uniforms, and you know, painters love fancy uniforms, so I guess that's why we have a lot of French and not very many of anything else. But I, I promise I will be getting some Brits for you as soon as I can, and then I'll be showing you that, because I imagine there is some interest in seeing how those, lo those soldiers look from that period as well. So anyway, <laughs> that's upcoming, but for now, let's just get to work on this particular figure. All right, I want to start working on the gloves and pants of this figure, mostly because I want to start with the pants because they're sort of the deepest level and it's always good to work sort of from the inside out whenever possible. Anyway, the pants and the gloves are going to be kind of a buff color basically on this particular figure. So I'm going to start by base coating these areas using the Foundry Buff Leather Shade Color. And so then once that's dry, I'm going to start uh, layering on the other colors in that buff leather triad. So here you can see I'm starting out first with the buff leather medium. As you can see, I'm going to be putting it pretty much everywhere, where really just not in the recesses and sort of the edges. So I'm reserving that dark color as sort of... A sort of a divider between the pants and other shades. I haven't thinned the color here very much. I'm applying it reasonably thick because at this point I don't really care about uh, building up really transparent, uh, thin layers of color. I, I, as a matter of fact, I want this shade to be pretty much everywhere on all the buff areas. And now I'm going to finally apply the buff leather light shade. Um, I'm going to again be putting it in most areas, not worrying too much about diluting it. I am going to focus more on areas that I want to highlight now. So, you know, making sure that that buff leather medium does come through a bit more and not really covering every single area. But, and so I'm really, I am going to focus on areas that I want highlighted here, but I'm not going to worry about layering too much. I'm just going to get this on as a sort of my basic uh, highlight. So my next step then in the highlight process is to apply here a boneyard light from another foundry triad to continue lightening these pants because in my opinion the um, buff leather triad it's it is a buff color but I want my buff color to be lighter than that 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 triad gets basically it's not enough because in real life you know the, the, these 
some of the gloves would have been leather and maybe the pants would have too, but I, I want this to feel creamier and lighter. And I find if I don't highlight it more, it's just a little bit too dark brown. So you can see now I'm putting that bone yarn color on and it's, I'm really now really focusing on applying it to the areas that I want highlighted. Uh, I've thinned the color down so that I can blend it out somewhat. And you know, I'm just being a lot more careful how I apply it. I'm putting on a couple layers in places where I want there to be extra light and brightness uh, to the figure. And finally, I'm gonna finish off the gloves and pants with some very thin down, just pure white. Now, I don't want these areas to look white, white, but because it's thin down, it's gonna be pretty transparent and it's a good way to still to lighten these buff colors without you know completely removing that buff effect and i'm mostly using this as an edge highlight so it's going to really get applied mostly sort of along the edges of the gloves the tops of fingers and sort of some of the creases and folds in the pants and you can see in that case i'm where i'm applying it in the pants i'm also being careful to blend it out thoroughly so i don't get too much of a white effect on those particular pieces And once the buff is done, I'm gonna move on to the actual white areas because he, he does have some parts of his uniform that are not buff, but sort of supposed to be white, which includes sort of the front of his uniform in this case, uh, his waistcoat, which shows a little bit at the bottom and also the straps and belt for that are holding on his scabbard. And most of the, in this particular figure, he's posed in such a way, so this isn't really exposed much, but I still wanna, you know, I still wanna do my best in the parts that do show. So I'm basically cutting these areas here using the Foundry Stone Light color to start out with. And then once I've got a good base coat, I'm going to go ahead and take that Stone Light color and mix maybe about 50-50, maybe a little bit more white into that color. And that's gonna be my medium highlight in these areas. It, because there's not very much area exposed of white, I, I don't feel like I really have to go into a lot of detail on the white here. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much, but I'm gonna apply that sort of as the next layer. And I, all these colors I've thinned a fair amount because that it means that I'll have to mix less different colors. I can just make, and I'm only gonna really use three different colors here in total, but because I thinned them and I'm gonna apply them in layers, I can you sort of use that technique to build up different colors without you know ha mixing more specific paints. And then finally, once I've got that medium sort of lightish gray on, I'm just going to take pure white, thin down, and I'm gonna layer it over those areas. And like I said, because I'm layering, it's not gonna immediately appear to be super, super bright white. So I can put on a couple of coats, kind of progressively building it up to being really true white, only sort of on edge areas and areas where I really want a lot of light to hit, but still uh, preserving some sort of light grayish tones in areas where there should be kind of a little bit of shadow falling. So now we're gonna move on to the Dragoon's jacket. And this was a beautiful dark green color. Um, dark greens are not a color that I've been in the past very good at painting, or at least I shouldn't say good, I just haven't done very many of them and I have never really tried to get really good results. So I wanted to try and improve this time in my technique. So hopefully this result, you'll like the result that I get here. Uh, Foundry actually makes some triads of dark green specifically for these sort of French Napoleonic figures, but I didn't want to use Foundry this time. I wanted to do this with Vallejos uh, just because they have a big range of greens and I know a lot of people have Vallejo and I kind of wanted to show, you know, how you can uh, use their paints to achieve this as well. Uh, so because I need this to be a really dark, rich color that I'm going to build up, I, it needs to have a really nice dark base. So, my, so what I'm using here is going to be a mix of Vallejo German Gray and the uh, Vallejo black green color. So once I've got that base layer on, I'm gonna take just 
pure black green and start highlighting the jacket with it. At this point, I'm not too concerned about where the paint goes. I just don't want it to get down the really deep recesses. But other than that, I'm going to put it everywhere, especially since it's quite low contrast. And it's very difficult to really see the difference here. It's a little bit greener than the base, but not a lot. The only area you really need to avoid is all the sort of seams and lines on the back of the jacket because these jackets do have a lot of that and you want to maintain the dark color down in those areas. So definitely be careful of that. And I am, I'm going to, so I'm not going to really worry about layering this too much just because it's so deep and this, it's so subtle. I don't, you know, feel like I need to go back over it. My second uh, highlight is going to be a mixture of the black, green, and some Vallejo deep green, which is a much more jady, more saturated green color, but still uh, quite dark. And I, as you can see here, I'm a, I am going to be start blending this quite a bit more. I just always apply it sort of from the area where you want the most concentrated color. You know there's going to be a lot of that color and then sort of uh, blend it outwards with a sort of a damp brush. I dampen my brush with my tongue, but you can use a paper towel or a sponge. The trick is you just don't want it really, really wet like you would get from dipping it in a cup of water. That's too wet. You don't want paint on the brush either but you just want sort of a slightly damp brush when you're doing this and you need to work fast because you need to be doing this before the paint you've just applied has dried. So I'm just going to work over it several times to sort of brighten up the color basically. And once I've done that I'm going to, my next layer is just going to be the pure deep green now. Uh, it's just without that black green mixed in. So you can see now you're really starting to see, you know, clear clear highlighting going on and now I have to, you have to start being a little bit more careful about where you apply the paint be a little bit not so I'm not putting it everywhere I'm putting less down I'm, I'm keeping my layers thin and I'm blending it out you can see like certain areas like under his arms and stuff I'm not putting it and I'm really focusing like where I expect light to be hitting like the tops of his arms his collar uh, and picking out sort of little folds and wrinkles in the backs of his of his coat and again being very careful even more careful not to get this paint down in the seams at the back of his coat, but really picking out along those seams as best as I can. And again, I'm keeping it thin and putting on multiple layers so I can build up color that way and get extra shades in there without having to mix additional colors of paint. For my final highlight on the jacket, I'm going to mix some Vallejo German Camouflage Bright Green into that deep green shade. You can kind of see it there on my palette. So I'm getting an even more bright yellowish green color. And I'm going to use this to highlight very sparingly because the, once again, this, this needs to be a deep green jacket. It shouldn't get too light because that's not what we're going for here. But you want to have some very small areas where you really want to emphasize. Uh, so I am using that light and color, but the other thing you can't quite tell here is it's, it's very thin down what I have there. So it's very transparent. So when I actually apply it to the figure, it's not going to come out quite that green instantaneously on him. So I'm going to be applying this color really as an edge highlight. So you can see it's going around the top of his collar and I'm following, kind of like following along the edges of all those dark seams to further emphasize them and also along the tops of any wrinkles or folds. Um, and I'm, but I'm doing it very, very lightly, blending it out quite a lot. And I am going to have to layer it, so I'm going to go back over these areas a couple of times to build up some color, but not too much. It, this, this is just sort of an emphasis step. And you can see, because I'm working so transparently with these greens, you can really see that those really dark, dark greens that I applied initially are still really showing through here. So the overall effect is, silly, is still a very dark, deep, rich effect, which is, which is still going to be very pleasing and, you know, very reminiscent um, of sort of, that, that, you know, that really dark uniform, which we're trying to recreate here. When the green is finished, I'm going to move on to the red sort of piping and turn backs that are sort of are along the bottom edge of the jacket and the back. Um, and I'm basically in those areas to start off with using um, Vallejo black red because we want to get another, once again, a really rich red color here. So this is the good starting point. I also wanted to point out really quickly that in between uh, the last step in this one, I applied uh, matte varnish to the green jacket. And the reason I did that is pretty much all greens from all ranges, at least in my experience, Vallejo, Foundry, they're all the same, have a tendency not to dry really, really matte. They dry a little, not exactly semi-gloss, but they're a little bit shiny 
Uh, and I don't like that look. Now you could kind of wait till the very end and just matte coat your entire figure, but I find it distracting to paint a figure where you've got areas that are kind of shiny like that because I feel like it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. The actual shininess sometimes actually makes it hard to see where you need to apply colors. It makes it difficult to kind of see the finished result. And so I totally recommend if you're working on a figure and you have some paints like blues and greens particularly uh, tend to do this for a lot of range of some of those dark colors. If you get that effect, don't hesitate to stop, apply a layer of matte varnish real quick, let it dry, and then continue working because you'll, you'll, you can see a lot better what you've got. It's easier to work on, you know, and it, it just, I, I, I just prefer to do that basically. Um, once I've got picked out carefully the red with that black red color, I'm then going to be taking Citadel Mephiston red and carefully uh, layering that fairly transparently over top of my base. You have to be, you need to be delicate here because this is a, these are very fine edges and you don't want to, you know, make a mess. But you can see because I'm applying, applying it fairly thinly, you're getting a really beautiful, rich, deep red and you can see the dark color really showing through underneath. And as always, I'm going to finish off the red areas with a Evil Sun Scarlet highlight, another uh, Citadel color. This time it's a layer color, and I'm, it's, it's already a fairly transparent color, so I'm just going to apply it and layer it on a little bit, you know, applying it several times, especially in areas where I want it to be quite bright, like down along the base and sort of along the, the very, very edges of some of these areas. And, you know, just do it until you feel like you've got a nice, rich red color and you know you don't have any areas that are just uh, that are too dark except down in the and really in the shadows and recesses now i'm going to do the black leather areas on this figure which are going to include his riding boots sort of the top bit of his scabbard and also the plume on his rather impressive sort of golden brass helmet so just start out basically by applying a black base coat to all of these these pieces and you know just don't get your paint where you don't want it on ruin your nice light buff pants i'm then going to start highlighting the black areas using Vallejo german gray and as always when i'm using this as a highlight on black i'm going to apply it pretty generously it's not very different from the black so you don't have to worry about you know being subtle here it's going to go pretty much everywhere i'm going to blend it out and i'm i have decided already that i want to try to get a slightly more subtle effects on these black areas and i sometimes do especially because they're so large if you have smaller bits of black on your figure you can kind of afford to make your highlights more exaggerated looking you can have some really shiny bits and that contrast really looks good but when you've got bits this big like these great big boots if you do that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look weird. It's going to look too gray. It's, 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 the exaggeration is not pleasant. So we have to be a little bit more careful here, particularly highlighting the boots. Uh, as far as the plume goes, he's got a lot, a lot of long strands of hair. And I'm just going to be consistently picking those out with the highlight color as best I can and just making sure the recesses stay that black base color. I'm going to continue the highlight process by mixing some Vallejo Neutral Gray into the German Gray. And in my first highlight, it's going to be very subtle. I'm only going to mix a really little bit of Neutral Gray in because I want the difference here between the different shades to be very, very, very slight. And that's important because, as I said in the last step, we want, it, we want the highlighting on these areas to be particularly subtle because they're so large and we don't, you know, we don't want it to look too gray or, you know, you know get too much you know really light emphasis on here so I'm just gonna work that color over here very carefully blending it out and you can see as I go up in shade I'm gonna start sort of picking out some wrinkles trying to get a little waviness a little some wrinkliness especially in the the, the part of the boots it's covering his calves because that makes it a little bit more interesting and as always, I'm ever consistently, with every color, going to continue highlighting his hair and his crest. Uh, I'm going to focus, as I go up the lighter colors, to more towards the top of the hair, as you would expect, sort of 
so that you know where the light would be hitting basically and on his scabbard you'll want to put it uh, the collider colors along the top mostly and blend downwards and of course i'm picking out the separate ridges in the sword grip as well that way putting the lighter colors on the top and leaving dark lines in between and i'm gonna make i think i, I and then i'm gonna continue with another layer where i'm gonna add even more of the neutral gray into the shade i've already created and sort of continue but making these very subtle shades and applying them to the leather areas. And also to get, just to make the color here a little bit more interesting, my final highlight on the black areas, I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna get it lighter, of course, with the neutral gray, and then I'm gonna mix just a hair, just a hint of layer royal purple into it, and that's gonna give it a slight reddish purple cast which I think is a little bit more interesting because as I've said in previous videos, a great, you can, it's good to try to, you know, take your spice up your grays and blacks a little bit just by giving them a slightly different color cast. And I'm going with purple here because I feel, I don't know, I feel like it kind of complements both the red and the green pretty nicely here. So th that's why I'm using that. And I'm applying it very subtly. It's really gonna be used as sort of an edge highlight and, and just really, really, really relatively sparingly on sort of all the areas and I'm blending it out. Now I want to unify the horsehair crest a little bit more, so I'm going to use some washes. I'm going to start out with a Leviathan purple wash to, to sort of emphasize the purple a bit more. And then once that's dry, I'm going to apply a Nolan oil wash and to get sort of this whole crest a little bit darker because I, I, I want, I feel like there's not enough contrast between the, the deep recesses and the highlight areas. Plus, I don't want it to look exactly the same as the boots. I want it to be, feel a little bit darker. Uh, I think that's fine. I, there needs to be some variance. So I'm just using the Nolan oil basically to darken everything down here. And, but you're still, I'm not going to put on so much that I lose all that purple cast. You can apply more of the wash down in the deep, or deeper recess areas towards the bottom and towards his, his helmet and head if you want, just to get a little bit more variance. Uh, when you're done, you can also go back over if you want to apply a little more of the Leviathan purple, just if you want to emphasize, especially on the highlighted areas, a little bit more that slightly different color tone. Now let's work on the leopard skin on his helmet, which is the part I've kind of been looking forward to because I've never done this before and I want to, you know, see what I can do. I am going to be base coating the leopard skin uh, section here using Boneyard Medium from Foundry to start off with. And then I am going to add a Boneyard Light Highlight color to it. Oops, see, I made a mess there. I got some, actually got some paint onto the plume, so I'm going to just wash it off with a little bit of water there. And then finally, once I applied the Boneyard Light, I'm going to take just some pure thin down white for extra emphasis and apply that as a sort of an edge highlight, sort of along, you know, the areas of, the, of that skin that you'd expect to be especially light looking. Now for the dots on the leopard skin. If you look at the sort of leopard spots, they're, they're besides being really dark and kind of round, most of them have sort of a light brownish yellow colored center. And you can apply this after you put the black dots down too, but I think I'm gonna do it first too, just kind of to give myself a base to work from. I'm using buff leather here is that is the color for the sort of spot centers. Now for the sort of the circles themselves, if you look closely, you'll see that these are not really pure black, sort of a very dark black brown. So I'm mixing a 50 50 combination of German camouflage black brown and black for these. And I've thinned it down because, well, you've got to apply these pretty finely. So what you can see here is I'm going to start outlining those dots that I already made with the buff leather. <clears throat> and you want to not really close your circles here. If you look at the spots on a leopard, you see you see that the sides are often very strongly outlined, but the circles tend to break at either the top or the bottom, or sometimes both. So you should be, you know, making your circles. So you know, you should make it inconsistent. So the circles should all be different, but the, the circles should they should definitely be a little bit vague on either one side or the other or both. And some circles you can have too, especially smaller ones are not going to have any. A light center at all they're just going to be dark but they should be kind of 
look like perfect circles. They should look more like really sort of uh, vertical stripes, really, that have been kind of combined to form sort of almost circles. Or maybe a little bit like a shell pattern, even if you want to think of it, like a cowrie shell where you've got like two lines and sort of a central piece. So I'm, I'm trying to mix it up here a little bit, trying to get a good variety in my spots. And when I'm done, I'm, you know, I'm going to look and, you know, keep checking, you know, trying to get a good variety. And I'm going to highlight the dark areas here with a bit of the German camouflage black brown and some of that buff leather mixing, just a little, very subtly, just to get a difference in color. Uh, after I finished this, I decided that the base color I'd used, I'd gotten a little bit too light. Uh, I wanted it to feel a little bit darker, that like, you know, a leopard's pelt shouldn't be quite that light. So I've taken here the Boneyard uh, medium color again, and I'm going to very lightly apply it sort of in between the dots. But I'm going to be careful here. I don't want it to get really heavy, I'm, so I'm layering it on thinly. But you can see it helps sort of darken that down, get it a little bit more yellow, which I think is a little bit more appropriate. I just, you know, sometimes you just see things like this that need to be changed. And I'm going to finish off again with a little bit of white, which I'm going to use kind of as an edge highlight on areas of the pelt where there are no dots, but where I, I still want some extra emphasis, basically. And, you know, you can, I'm going to keep, keep messing with this a little bit till I'm kind of satisfied with the proportion of dots and middle spots and whatnot. So now basically everything that's left to do on this figure is going to be metallic because this is, is a Napoleonic French officer so he's really blingy, he's got a lot of gold and shiny stuff going on here. So I'm going to start out by base coating all those areas using a mixture of German camouflage black brown and Vallejo air gold. Obviously the mix should be mostly the brown color, or just a bit of the gold thrown in to give it a slight metallic edge. Now areas that I'm going to base coat here will include his epaulets, all the buttons on his jacket. Uh, the handle and guard on his sword and all the parts of his scabbard that haven't been painted yet. And of course, naturally, his very impressive helmet, which we're going to want to spend a lot of time working on. So, you know, just carefully base coat all these areas. I tend to, uh, if you've wondered, I tend to often do metallic colors last. I don't know, I guess it's mostly just kind of a preference, but mostly it's because of my sort of the general premise of working from the outside in on figures which we do, of course, to avoid, to make painting easier because if you do outer areas first and then paint inner areas, it's harder to do that without making a mess on the areas that you've already painted. So if you start inside and work outward when you're painting, that's gonna prevent, you know, you're not gonna have to worry so much about messing up things that you've already painted. And on most figures, the metallic areas tend to be sort of the outermost part of the figure. So that's often why that happens. And it's especially important with metallic paints because they, they can make a real big mess if you get them onto other colors. They're hard to clean up because of the metallic particles in the paint. Even if you really clean them off, the metallic particles tend to stay behind just a little bit and leave kind of a slightly glittery effect, which is really unpleasant. It can be really hard to cover that up. So. That's one reason that I'm always really careful with these paints. Once everything is going to base coat, I'm going to start highlighting using just pure Vallejo Air Gold here. And this is really when the figure is going to start to look impressive. Um, you're going to be, want to be a little bit careful when you're applying this highlight to the metallics because uh, there are, especially with the helmet and the epaulets, there are a fair number of areas where you want to make sure you uh, preserve some lines of deep color just so that you can differentiate between different elements, especially in the helmet where you've got various details and edges and pieces. You need to keep those dark line, those dark lines because otherwise, especially with the metallic colors have a tendency, it'll all look kind of, it'll, it'll just all blur together too much and you want there to be crispness and you know that you can see actual different elements. So be very careful when you're painting these areas to keep that, that dark color there. I'm Gonna apply, I'm just going to apply the gold. I'm, I th I'm not uh, thinned it a little bit. I'm going to blend it out on areas like the helmet, top of the helmet, where you know it's where I want it, where there's a big area, and I want a little bit of variation in color. But you know, just you know, just mostly this, most of the areas of metal here are very small, so it's mostly just a question of carefully picking them out and just not getting the paint down in the recesses. All right, so to make my final highlight on the gold brass areas, I'm going to make a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Air Silver and Vallejo Air Gold, and I'm going to use it 
to emphasize all the areas that I want to be really, really bright. Um, as I've said before in other videos, this is a great tr highlight color, a great trick for, for getting really bling blingy gold or brass, which obviously would have you would have seen on a figure like this because he had really shiny, you know, impressive equipment. So you should really be thinking about highlighting pretty much everything on this guy a little bit, but it should be done very sparingly. So you put it everywhere, but just not very much, uh, and keep it thin so that the brass underneath really shows through. And you, you want to put more of it on thin, small pieces of metal, so everywhere there's sort of little edges or bits. Like, for example, on his helmet, you'll see there's quite a lot of little edges and decorative elements, and they should all really get this sort of pop of really light color. On his epaulets, where there's all the little banding and stuff, but larger areas of metal, less so, like on his scabbard, you only want to focus it on the edge there and blend it out a lot, because usually when light hits metal, it's going to glisten and gleam on those little tiny thin areas that really refract the light, whereas the, the bigger, flatter areas are not going to, it's not going to have that effect so much. So that's why you need to think about putting this color uh, more strongly on the small areas and much more subtly on the wider areas. All right, here is our finished Imperial Guard Dragoon Officer, uh, in contemplative thought, I suppose, given his posture. Uh, I really had a lot of fun painting this guy. I'm really quite pleased with the results that I got here, especially on his green jacket. And I sort of, as I as touched on a little bit before, it's a little one of, bit of one of my personal goals on this guy to try to get a really nice, subtle, rich green color, which was something I, I I guess mostly it's not that I couldn't do it, I just had never really tried to do it before. It's never really been a priority, but I felt like on this figure it was really important. So I really like how the green turned out here, I, and I hope that it'll be useful to you too when you're painting these sort of dark green colors, because it can be so hard to get a nice green that's got that's complex and rich with some real depth to it, but, but still really have a nice, you know, strong green to it and, you know, not feel, you know, messy. So I hope that was useful. I also really like how the leather bits came out. This really subtle effect I think is really nice and complementary to the other elements of this particular uh, figure. And of course, he's just impressive. You can't get over how impressive and beautiful these Napoleonic uniforms are. And if you love to paint, then these figures are always just going to be a ton of fun, a great way to practice using all sorts of neat colors, neat textures, like on that leopard skin. So, you know, if you enjoyed this video, uh, as always, please leave me likes, uh, share it with your friends, you know, favorite it, uh, and of course, leave me comments with what you thought, uh, both bad and good. Uh, it's all appreciated. I like to hear from you, and you can always also subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with what I'm doing. So, uh, once again, hope you enjoyed this, and I will be seeing you next week.